What is Barrett esophagus or metaplasia? How is the diagnosis and treatment done? Barrett's esophagus. It can be defined as the replacement of the epithelial tissue covering the inner surface of the esophagus by a tissue similar to the tissue covering the inner surface of the stomach and intestines. Barrett's esophagus is a condition that should be followed up as a result of long-term gastroesophageal reflux disease, which is observed in 10% of reflux patients and may predispose to esophageal cancer. Not every Barrett's esophagus turns into cancer, but in some cases the risk is high. Elderly age, male gender, long-term reflux disease, obesity, Smoking are the conditions that increase the risk of Barrett's esophagus and also the risk of developing cancer from the Barrett esophagus. Barrett esophagus has no specific symptoms. Generally, in these patients, symptoms of reflux disease such as bitter water in the mouth, burning sensation in the chest and throat, hoarseness, and prolonged cough, dental and gum problems, hiccups, burping sensation, difficulty swallowing are observed. The overall incidence of Barrett's esophagus is between 0.1 and 3%. Patients with Barrett's esophagus have an approximately 30-fold increased risk of developing esophageal cancer compared to the general population. While the risk of cancer development is low in patients without dysplasia and with short-segment Barrett esophagus, under 3 cm, it is higher in patients with advanced age, obesity, and long-segment Barrett esophagus, over 3 cm. The annual incidence of Barrett esophagus in the general population is 0.25%. The risk of progression to cancer in Barrett's esophagus patients without dysplasia is 0.2 to 0.5% per year. The risk of progression to cancer in Barrett esophagus patients with low-grade dysplasia is 0.54 to 0.7% per year. The risk of progression to cancer in Barrett esophagus patients with indeterminate, indefinite dysplasia is 0.2 to 1.2% per year. The risk of progression to cancer in Barrett esophagus patients with high-grade dysplasia is between 4 and 8 percent per year. Diagnosis during endoscopy A diagnosis is made by taking biopsies from the area considered to be Barrett's esophagus. Screening endoscopy is not recommended for Barrett's esophagus. Advanced endoscopic examination is recommended in terms of Barrett's esophagus in older, obese male patients with reflux for more than five years. It has been reported that it may be beneficial to use advanced endoscopic methods such as staining endoscopy and magnified endoscopy for the diagnosis of dysplasia or early-stage cancer. Here you see the Barrett's esophagus with standard endoscopic examination in a patient with reflux disease for more than 10 years. Findings suggestive of early cancer are observed in electronic and chromoendoscopic examination in the same session. Magnified endoscopic examination shows changes in the surface and vessels. Subsequently, it was staged with other advanced endoscopic methods and it was observed that the cancer did not extend out of the esophagus but was limited only to the inner layer. In the same session, the Barrett esophagus with dysplasia was successfully treated with non-surgical treatment using the endoscopic submucosal dissection method, which is a Japanese advanced endoscopic treatment method. Here you see the cancerous Barrett's esophagus endoscopically removed. When Barrett esophagus is detected, it is recommended to perform advanced endoscopic examinations at regular intervals for early detection of dysplasia cancer development and for advanced endoscopic treatment without surgery. Tracking intervals according to American and European guidelines, it ranges from 1 to 3 and 5 years depending on the length of Barrett's esophagus. Endoscopic follow-up intervals should be shorter in patients with long-segment Barrett esophagus due to the risk of developing dysplasia. Barrett esophagus 
It is a disease that can be treated with advanced endoscopic applications, such as endoscopic mucosal resection, endoscopic submucosal dissection, and ablation, if a dysplastic area is detected before it turns into cancer, or if any early-stage cancer has developed.